September 6, 1993, had been an uneventful night on police officer Christopher Lewis's beat in the rural community of Conway, Arkansas. As his shift was winding down, the stillness of the pre-dawn hours was suddenly shattered, and he was forced to resort to tactics they never taught in the police academy. Patrol when I observed a van coming down the road driving erratically at a high rate of speed. I fell in behind the van, uh, turned on the blue lights, and tried to initiate a stop. At that point, I thought maybe I just had a drunk driver. Usually, when you fall in behind an intoxicated driver, they try to straighten up, not try to show that they've been drinking. The van not slow down at all. They seemed to react to me turning on the blue lights and rather than trying to straighten up, they were trying to get away. As though it wanted to get away at any cost. I feel like at the time that I've just fallen into a situation in which they have committed a violent crime. A backup unit was launched from the Conway Police Department. I'm still a rookie. I've only been on the street about three months. Fear of the unknown, I guess, is probably the worst fear of all. The attention level goes up, uh, the alertness goes up, and the heart rate goes up quite a bit. All of a sudden, the van comes to an abrupt stop. I didn't know whether to expect the back doors were going to fly open and they might try to come out shooting. X-ray 50, Colonel. I'm going to be out with Paul Zebra George, 486, and be on Harrison and Tyler. Everything was quiet. Maybe they just wanted to get rid of me before my backup could get there. Stay in the vehicle. Stay in the vehicle. At this point, I hear moans coming from inside the van. And the first thing that goes through my mind is a hostage situation. With each step I took, I got a little more scared. I was preparing myself to either have to take a life or for mine to be taken. Mm. Mm. Officer, I'm having a baby! When I saw there was a pregnant woman, uh... I guess I was more scared than ever, actually. Can we go ahead and send an ambulance to location? She's trying to apologize to me for the way she's driving, uh, which is totally unnecessary. All I want to know is how long I've got. Do we have time to make it to the hospital? He's coming! Okay, okay, okay. Try and relax. The ambulance is on the way, okay? When I see the baby's head, I start to step up into the van. Um, the only place for me to get is on the steering wheel. So I position my butt on the steering wheel of the van to catch the baby when it comes out. Okay, go ahead and push for me, okay? Starting to come. We spend a lot of time and training on what to do in a violent situation. Uh, very little on what to do in a situation like this. I've got his head now. I was doing all I could to keep from going into shock at that point. All right. Okay, it's coming out, okay? okay. Just keep on pushing. After I got a hold of the baby's head, I started to calm down a little bit and begin to think, now, the baby's head is out. What am I going to do if something goes wrong? Is on the way, okay? I knew that when a baby is born, um, it can be stable one second and the next second just drop and die on you on the spot. Are you okay? Okay, we're going to be just fine. The ambulance is on the way right now, okay? The original backup officer, Sergeant Chip Stokes, arrived, who happened to be an EMT. Because I had the training and experience in it, I went ahead and we traded places and then I've continued to deliver. Good deep breath for me. There you go, push. The conditions were, were very adverse because it was cool out there that night. I could definitely see relief in his face when I got there. Keep pushing. Hey, you're going to be just fine. Doing great. Doing just great. fine, devil. There you go. Just fine. There you go. Baby's out. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Doing great. Oh. Great. Look at here. You got it. Look at there, Mom. Sure enough. Big and strong. 
This baby, when he came out, he was hollering loud. All we had to do was pretty much wipe away uh, some of the mucus from the airways and wrap the baby up, uh, keep the baby warm, to bring life into the world like that. Um, that's the last thing I thought I was going to be doing. He's a big, strong boy. He sure is. After the rush is over and you stop and you look at the child that, that just came into the world with your assistance, it's breathtaking. <laughs> To stand back and to look and say, this is one of those things that I never planned on, but I sure am glad it happened. You always hear about policemen having to take someone's life, but here was a, a beautiful example of a policeman bringing life into the world. I'm gonna take him on the Due to the lack of time I had to react to the situation, uh, just kept me from going into shock. I think if I'd had time to think about it, I would have been scared to death. Delbrick King had delivered a healthy 7-pound, 14-ounce baby boy. She and her husband, Milton, named him Christopher, the same as the first officer on the scene who helped him be born. When Delbra went into labor with her eighth child, she'd thought she could make it to the hospital in time. My husband's at work, and I didn't think about calling anybody else at 5.30 in the morning. I just felt like I could do it. What is it? Turn around. You do it. When I heard... The two police officers had delivered the baby. I thought that was pretty wild. Uh, because, uh, well, who would think that would ever happen to my wife, you know? <laughs> but it did. And uh, I'm glad that they were there. I give uh, great gratitude to both of them. Recently, Delbra's whole family got a chance to meet the two officers who helped deliver baby Christopher. The feeling of delivering a child is like nothing else in the world. It's exciting to see her with the baby. Uh, they're so happy together, and you can't help but feel like you're part of that when you were there with the birthing experience to bring him into the world. He, um, It's just great to see him doing fine. <laughs> to me, it's so neat to see a, a young man, you know, be that excited about a baby. Babies are so helpless, and they're so totally dependent upon you. And it was like he really recognized and saw that, and I think he'll make a great father. I really do. Just out of the six years, I think he'll make a super dad. Let me see if I can hold him again. <laughs> this isn't the first time. Police get a lot of, of negative press. They get a lot of negative uh, situations that they encounter. Uh, and to be involved in something that's so positive and to make such a difference in somebody's life is really great. <laughs> to bring a life into the world like that, it's something that I definitely want to experience as far as having a baby of my own. I look forward to it. I don't think I'll be the one to deliver it, but I do look forward to it. <laughs>